Thank you very much, uh, Hilary, and I thank the organisers for the opportunity, and I welcome you all here to Parliament House. The, uh, this is a very this series that uh, the International Women's Development Agency and World Vision has initiated is a very important part of the program of enhanced community engagement that uh, the new government has come to office committed to, and. It's also a good example uh, of what we intend to do in terms of facilitating others to engage with the community about what we are doing in the Development Assistance Program and why we're doing it. It's always necessary to do that. I think we, of course, live in a democracy. We are spending other people's money. We have an obligation to explain to them why we're doing it and to deserve, earn and win their support for that. But now more than ever it's necessary for two reasons. One is that we are proposing a significant increase in the expenditure of the development assistance budget. It is uh, because economic growth figures are never exact and we measure uh, our expenditure commitment in proportion of gross national income, the numbers exactly of what it will be in future years can't be stated with precision, but we have committed to go from 0.3% uh, of uh, gross national income, which it was when we came to office, to 0.5% by uh, 2015, and on the normal projections we assume for budget, that means that the budget, the A program over those seven years will get to be two and a half times the size it was when we came to office more than double. And so that is, it's very exciting for me, and I want to talk about some of the implications of that and uh, its relationship to the theme for this evening. But it also imposes a special obligation to explain to people why we are committing what will be by the end of that process approximately $8 billion of the taxpayers' money for the task of fighting global poverty. I don't find that a difficult argument to make, but it's our obligation to make it, and as we increase expenditure, we must assume that scrutiny will be greater, it's entitled to be greater, we have a greater obligation to explain. But there's a second and more immediate reason, which is the global financial crisis. It changes the context. Around the world, governments have been making commitments to increase expenditure, very welcome commitments, very necessary commitments, and even in the context in which they were made, difficult commitments to make, but nevertheless easier than they are today because we were living in boom times. The economies were growing, budgets were growing, the capacity of government to fund those, uh, those initiatives while still maintaining the momentum of public spending on other domestic priorities was an easy argument to make. It's now a hard argument to make. That's not a case against making it. It's a case to make it more often and to make it better because we remain committed as a government to the goals which we set at the election, uh, which includes the 0.5 target by 2015 and the longer term aspiration to go to 0.7. But the promise is the 0.5 and we are committed to that. And, but it is now a more serious obligation to explain to people why in more difficult times it's more important to do it because all of us interested in this issue know that as the global financial crisis makes things more difficult for people in the developed world, then they have to make hard choices. In the developing world, people don't have any choice. They have, it makes their struggles to eat, their struggles to survive much more stark and difficult. And so their need for our assistance is enhanced. We have a greater obligation to do it. Now, I don't want to paint too gloomy a picture. The, in, the indications are that Australians are generally sympathetic to this argument. The most recent uh, survey of community opinion, which Ozaid undertook, showed that 91% of Australians approve of Australia giving aid to poorer countries, and 70% approve a lot of Australians giving to poorer countries, and 39% think we don't spend enough. In fact, you think that means 61% think 
we, uh, we spend too much. That's not the case. 39% say we don't spend enough. Only 9% say we spend too much. The rest say we've got it about right. So the climate of public opinion that underlies, underpins what we do is supportive. But we need to deepen that commitment. My subjective assessment, that's what the data says. I don't have any data for this next assessment. It is my assessment as an active participant in this debate in the community is that that level of support is broad but thin. It's not deeply embedded in Australian society and is therefore capable of being shattered by adversity, including the consequences of the global financial crisis. So we need to build on it, but we have the basis on which to build. And building on it requires us to be efficient, effective, and for the program to be explained. Now all of that is something I could talk about at greater length, but it's, I use it as backdrop for the last few moments when I wish to talk initially about the, some of the partnership issues and then uh, after others have spoken I'll respond to your questions for so long as I can stay and I do apologise I'll have to leave just before the end of the function. Of course we are changing the character of partnerships. The new government has come in with a partnerships focus in our relationship.